Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this grumpy faced cartoon character on rough fencing wood. Just spend five minutes just to sand it down, it comes up really nice. And it's ideal for working on for somebody that's just starting out with routering and scroll sawing. And you don't want to go out and waste your money on expensive woods. I've certainly had no issue, I've got a shed full of this kind of wood. The idea is to route out. Or the face area. You have a couple of options. You could literally just route out the black lines and paint the either side. I'm just going to go the other way for me, just because it makes it more interesting. I'm just going to route out everything and just leave the black lines. And then we will eventually put our paints in, sand it down, and then paint these black, hopefully, or a bit of linseed oil, just to make them out a little bit darker and see how it goes. So look at your options and see what you want to do. On this one, I've actually got the image onto tracing paper. Simply put that onto our wood. We stuck it down with some painter's tape, and we put carbon paper underneath. And you literally just draw around it with a pen or so pencil. It takes just five minutes, and that transfers the image onto your wood like so. Now you could use that one, obviously, over and over again. There is different methods. I've seen folks stick down the template. And route over the top. I did try it the once, it's certainly not for me. There's also different uh, acetones, I believe, different thinners, thinners, should I say. You can put it on and you rub the back with a spoon, and that hopefully transfers over on certain papers and all the rest of it. Just too complicated. Carbon paper and trace, you're not going to go wrong with that. Now, on this one, I've actually, first time I've tried this, I've actually got a Sharpie pen and literally just Drew around the lines, because you imagine when you first put your line on, it's quite a thin line like that. That's just far too thin to make a border. So you can either go around it twice, the whole image, just to give yourself that bit of spacing like so. So obviously you'll route out either side of that, and that will be your little framework, similar as we've got here. But on this one, I literally just got my black marker, went over it, and like so. And that just gives you a nice thicker border for you to route on either side. We'll only be routing on the inner pieces because we will cut this all out on a scroll saw once it's done. And depending how confident you are, if you think some of these pieces are a bit smaller, you can just go over them again like so. And you can just widen that framework to have more confidence where you can go into the thinner sections. Remember, the mouth we will cut out completely because that's where we want our little bird to go in there because this is obviously going to be a front of a nesting box and eventually we'll put some kind of box on the back to work out a nice little box for it and that should be the entrance once it's all painted and finished and like i just said previously we're going to route out all these sections on here so we're basically just going to leave all the black lines so it's, it's a lot more work involved the other option is just to route out the black lines. Put your black paint in, sand it down, and then paint your colours, the white for the beard and the brown for his little hat. I'm just going to go the more out of the two and re remove everything. Then we paint it nicely, sand it down, and then we'll paint all these frameworks black afterwards, or even boiled linseed oil, or a stain of some description. But for now, we're just going to carry on by routing out. And for me, I use these CNC bits. They come in 10, 15, 20 degrees. That's literally just the angle of the cut on the end, like so. I'm going to get it. Maybe not. Okay, no problem. It's not focusing today. But that's just a 20 degree end there. And we'll go right up to our lines. So we'll go all inset to, to the lines all around there and around those sections. And we'll basically go around everything with that. They do have a small size shaft on them, a 3.175. And they will fit a Dremel no problem if you have the router attachment for a Dremel. If you're using a quarter inch shank router like myself, you need an adapter reducer colic. It's just a simple colic, should I say. Just a little tube like that with a couple of slits in it. And you'll slide your CNC bit into there. That's now got a quarter inch shaft, 6.35 millimeter. That will fit your router no problem. I'm going to work on roughly about three millimeter depth all the way around. I have a little depth charger somewhere if I can find it. Here's one similar to this one, and it's just different 
date and you put your router on there that will be your depth if you want to go deeper you can deeper you can also purchase depth gauges this is the one i use i know that's three millimeters because that's exactly the same thickness 3.175 as your cnc bit so that's plenty and i use that three millimeters on 90 percent of my little projects so we do all the lines first once we've done that we can remove that and we'll pop on one of these end milling bits these are fantastic i have no issues with these and there's nothing too complicated so we can probably go for a decent size one and that will fit your same adapter collet same again we'll set it to three millimeters we will have a couple of these sections removed and we'll set it to the depth we've got on there and we'll basically remove all this inner wood and hopefully we'll just be left with those nice thin black lines okay so let's pop our cnc bit into the adapter we'll set it to three millimeters we'll start doing all our line work and then we'll use the end miller bit to clear it all out and then we will get a scroll saw to remove our inner old piece for the bird to fly into and then we'll cut it all out and then hopefully we'll work out if we're going to put we will put something on the back be it a box made of similar stuff or a bit of slating or i'm looking for an old plant pot to go at the back just to make the little box for the birds to nest in okay let's start routing this one out right we've gone all the way around with those cnc bits it's hard to tell to be honest against that black marker pen that we've put down but i can assure you we've gone all the way down and you notice up there look there we go we removed some of those more awkward ones i've also put an extra ring around the mouthpiece because when we remove this middle section that will just leave a nice black framework of three millimeters depth and that might just be enough for the little birds to come over and then grab hold of that and have a little look inside and see if they won't become a tenant <laughs> okay so cnc bits are done you'll get a lot more projects out of that remember these are just the bits i use i use cnc bits other people like to use profile bits and liner bits i like to use these end milling bits other folk use spiral up cuts or whatever and i also like to use these straight flush bits they're far too big for this one you come in with something too big like that as, you, as you're going around you'll catch these thinner sections and that will break that off no problem whatsoever so to be safe and sound we just use these little end milling bits like i said previously same size shaft 3.175 so let's just slot in there we'll pop that into our router we'll set it to that depth there one of those that we've already removed and then basically just remove all that you see now apart from that little black thin line you'll soon whip it out if it is slower like i just said there now there is better bits or quicker bits i'm in certainly in no rush but these are just a little bit too aggressive but if you have a lot of clearance certainly look at bigger size bits okay let's clear it out with the end millimeter
Right, we've made it all the way around with those end milling bits. The good thing about those, they give you a fairly smooth back section, as well as you can come in and just gently just nibble away to get up to where you want it to be. And you can more or less see from that, it's all been cleared out and we've not lost any of our little black framework. So that's, that's a good sign. Now the next day before we do a little general tidy up, we just want to remove the mouth section there. Remember that's going to be the entrance hole for the little bird to get into the nest box. And we also want to cut it out completely just to give it a nice shape. Now for that I'm going to use a scroll saw. They're coming with three different types of blades. I'll just show you quickly. There's a standard pin blade. They'll have a pin at both ends. That would do on this saw, no problem whatsoever. When you put your blades in the saw, you want to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up and have the blade facing towards you. This will do this project, no problem. If it's more detailed work you want, they do a pinless blade. There's no pins on there at all. They have a clamp at the top and bottom. They're more on your more expensive saws. They're ideal if you're doing a lot of detailed work. If you imagine if we had a really small hole, imagine we're going to cut out that bit of tongue section there, tongue. You drill a pilot hole, you could feed that through and cut that out. And as with your pin blades, those pins would be in the way. As it is, we're just going to do a full circle there for you. I'm tempted just to remove that little bit there. Don't seem to do any purpose. I'm sure the birds aren't going to be that bothered about it. So there are two types of blade. Me personally, I like the good old spiral blade. Pegasus number five today. Good thing about spiral blades, the teeth are spiraled the full length of the blade. Just there. So that way they cut in any direction. So you can basically start there and we can just feed that wood and cut it like that without basically moving or turning that wood, should I say, the ones. Ideal for bigger projects. They take a little getting used to and folk either love or hate them. However, with the other two, the pinned and the pinless blade, you would have to come in there, come down to there, and then you would turn that, cut that round like so, and then turn and cut that round and turn. And so. It's a lot of turning and twisting. Too much to me. I've tried them, and I just can't settle with straight blades. So spirals for me. They are a pinless blade. Unfortunately, with my little drapper saw, I have to use these adapter clamps, top and bottom. They basically would replace... A pin effect so instead of hooking the pin into the scroll saw we hook that little clamp on exactly the same idea my little old drapper saw which i purchased second hand five years ago is still going strong so don't feel the need to go out and buy all the expensive tools my router that you've just seen is a black and decker dn66 i believe they stopped making those in 1982 yet i can still find them on facebook marketplace and good old ebay and stuff and I won't use anything gold. I'm actually on my eighth machine. So don't feel you've got to go out and get all the most expensive tools if you have no idea how to use them. Cheap and cheap, it works for me. Okay, we'll pop this Pegasus number five spiral blade in the scroll saw and let's just cut this out quickly and then we'll come back and give it a general tidy up with a flexi cable on our Dremel and some engraving bits. Let's cut it out first. Right, we've got all the way around with our Pegasus Spiral Blade number five. Just about made it round. It's not brilliant, and I'm not a scroller by any stretch, 
But that's what sandpaper's for and sanding drums. We'll just give it a nice smooth off. Get a bit of sanding paper. Get these little nodges off the back. It takes literally seconds to do. Like so. That's all nicely done then. So we'll just give it all a general tidy up all the way around. I like to use these engraving bits. Just cheap, cheap eBay specials. You put in Dremel engraving bits. You'll get a packet of 30 of those for next to nothing. Simply pop one in to our flexi cable. These I do recommend. Just eBay again. Get one with a nice flat bottom. And we'll go around and just give this a nice tidy up with, with that. And then, like I say, pop a little sanding drum on. And we'll sort out those little bits on the side. So when we come back, this will all be nicely tidied up. And a good old bit of sandpaper just to sort it out. Right, that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. You can see from that, we've got all our framework sorted out. We've got the nice little hole there for the bird to go in. We made the little steps. Now you notice there, I've drawn a circle. That's gonna be the shape of our nesting box. On previous ones, I've tried using wood there to make a triangle shape, but it's gonna to be too small as this. It's gonna be quite chunky wood. So. I found a bit of recycled plastic piping, something like this one here. A good old neighbour just dropped this off for me. And it's literally four inches across. So all I've done is cut a piece off, like so, roughly five inches. I placed that on there and I got the pencil and just drew inside that one. Just give me that basic shape. And that will be our bird box. We're going to use this bit of piping once we have that set in there and that will be the box. And hopefully that's enough for the little bird to get inside and do whatever it wants to do. So unfortunately I've lowered down the best I can, literally so we just clear this section here. Because we want that bird, the hole to be fairly high. We don't want it too level that they can just go in and out. So you want a bit of a bit of a drop in there when you actually go inside. So now I'm gonna to have to route out just to the outer side of this one, just to give me a little line like that. And hopefully that will just sit in there by three millimetres and we're going to do exactly the same for the back section. Now I've done a bit of the back section already. Same kind of wood. And you can see from there, that's the effect we're going for. It's about three millimetres deep, maybe four. So we will cut this out to what shape we, we want to. And that will sit in there nicely like that. It says hopefully that will sit in there. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the lid. And that will sit on there like so. And once we've cut that back out, that will be our little nesting box in there. I hope that all makes sense to you. I'll quickly just route this out, sand this one out, and cut the shape out. And then we'll have our basic shape. And then we can concentrate and get the paint at the front. Let's just do a bit of routing first, get them and get it sorted. Right, so we've got our front section done. That's ready for painting now. Middle section was no problem. Obviously, that was just a case of cutting it to fit. And we've also done the back section. And we've inlaid that, cut that middle section out. 
just so that will fit into that. And if you remember, we've done the same on the back of that one. Just free-handed with a router. So, you know, it's not going to be perfect. I can guarantee you any little bird that wants to pop by and take over the tenancy is not going to be concerned about the perfect fit. The good thing about it is it's definitely watertight. You can just back get that in there nicely tightly if you fiddle about a bit. So that's in there nice. And it's not too bad. It's not a million miles away. It's what we want. So that's our front section done. I will put some little blocks inside here. And I'm going to just put a little couple of screws at either side just to hold that in place. And then should you have to come and clean it out or whatever, you can just remove the two screws and take that front section off. Because obviously the back section here, which will fit on like so, if I just get it somewhere in there, like so, and we'll pop that in there. Yeah, that's a nice tight fit, is that? Is it pretty? We don't know. The birds are, certainly aren't going to be bothered about it. But I've noticed here with those two screw holes, one at the top and one at the bottom, obviously that will fasten to the post. We're not going to get in with screwdrivers or anything. So the idea is to... We'll fasten that to the post first as it is, make it all nice and secure. And then we'll come along and slot the front piece on afterwards. And then like I just said, should you need to clean it out or there's some, some bees or wasps have moved in, we can just remove the screw from either side and take that front piece off and that will be left on the fence. You'll see towards the end of the video as we put it all together. Right, I'm just simply going to put a couple of little blocks in here just so we can put the screws inside. I suppose you could silicone that in there if you wanted to. I'm not too sure about that myself personally, just because of the weight of this and once it starts getting weathered. So to play safe, we're going to have a couple of screws in either side. We'll just put a little block of wood here, there and the same on that one. You'll see in a minute as we go along. I have speeded up these little videos just slightly because my videos are, are tending to go a little bit too long. And I certainly don't want to bore you guys out there that are watching these. So we'll quickly get these little blocks in. Sort out the screws and then we'll be ready to put some colour on Grumpy Face here. Right, there's our little bird box, all nicely secure now. You notice we had our little inner plug sorted, and when it's just screwed in either side, and that just holds it all nicely in place. It's not going to go anywhere now. And I think that's plenty for the little birdhouse. Is it pretty? Not really. But I don't think the birds are going to be too bothered what the outside's going to look like, as long as it's nice and cosy in there. And more or less see from that. So that's it for the uh, building side of things. Literally now I'm just going to remove this top section again. And then we're going to take it and we're going to paint it. Some nice paints. Give it a bit of colour that it should look like. And then we'll come back and put it all back together again. And if I can just show you this quickly. Just remove this other screw. Mentioned previously about the screwdriver fitting in and getting it attached to the to the wall itself. We could actually just pop that in there. You can just see them two little blocks of wood that we've used. They're not going to interfere with any nesting. You could actually sand them down a bit more if you wanted to. So we'll screw that to the wall because that just allows us to get in with the screwdriver. Once that's nice in place, we can literally just pop this one back on front again. And that'd be fine. What I did do with this, it caught me out, is it because the blocks are so small, when I went in with the screw, it just split the wood. Caught me out this morning, a little bit too early for me. So I've re-glued this one down, and it's rough and ready, and I literally just popped two screws in. Same again, that's not going to interfere with anything. To be honest, we should have probably drilled this, and we could have screwed them in there. But anyway, it is what it is. 
so it's not going to interfere we've still managed to make a project so that will fit on there again and we'll screw it once it's all on the fence but for now we're going to get some paint and we'll literally paint this one up right that's it this little project is finished now you can see from that we've just literally just screwed it on to our underground poly pipe four inch that one that's nice and solid and if you once it's on the fence if you wanted to gain access instead of removing it from the fence you can literally just take out the little screws at either side and hopefully that front section should pull off now is it pretty yeah front's okay that's all the birds are interested in. The side view is maybe not so good. I did make myself a little window to go on the side there, if need be. And I was going to do a little chimney, but I think we're going to save that for another project and just keep this one as it is. And you can just about see in there, it's nice and cosy and ready for its new residence. Now, do a little bit of research as regards to your bird boxes. Some sites say you want ventilation... You want uh, easy access, some say clean them out each season, some sites say leave them alone, there's no need to clean them out at all. Some say be careful what kind of paint you're using, what kind of sprays you've put on. The list can go on and on. The access entrance to the mouth itself, to the bird box. They do say do not put perches on, because that stops the bigger birds landing on those and then look inside and disturbing. So definitely don't put a perch on, that is about the only thing I will agree with. As regards to the rest, I've just used acrylic paints and I've given it a little spray with gloss varnish here. Just give it a little bit more protection. It's not going to last forever and it won't be the best finish in the world. But as regards to this little project, it will do for our little birds, hopefully, if they ever come to move in. I've made four different boxes for my garden and I've never had one bird in. I've made boxes with the wood spirit face on for friends of mine and they've had birds nesting in season after season so unfortunately they're not too happy with my accommodation but that's it this little project is finished so it's a grumpy bird box it measures in at 10 inches by 6 inches across we routed it out on rough fencing wood using cnc bits for the lines and our end milling bits to clear it all out we then painted on acrylic paint diluted nicely so it's more of a stain and if you look closely, you can more or less just see the grain of the wood. So let, let, let it soak into the wood, more so than put it on too thickly. And then I give it a quick spray with a little gloss just to finish it off. And that's it. We're going to find a space for this temporary. I do believe a family member is going to claim this one. And I've certainly no problem with that one. But for now, this little project is finished. Just nice, little, easy, fun projects. Nothing to get too excited about just enjoy yourself yeah, we're pulling like that to it okay there we go all right thank you very much for watching